Hello everyone and welcome back to the open casket, or as we called it today, cooking with Urshel. What are we cooking, Big Ursh? Pasta. And I'm sure it was partially. <laughs> we can't there see your nips, which that's alright. It's gonna not get this there video go. demonetized. There God damn. Now I'm gonna have my to nips, and If my nips demonetize something, it means I have to lose weight. Because <laughs> they think they think I'm a woman. They're gonna be like, "Damn, those are some nice double B's you got there, fella." Uh, we're gonna cook up a little, little bit of pasta right now. Are you really gonna cook pasta while we record a goddamn podcast? <laughs> yeah. This is your episode too. This is the Jamie Gillis episode, and you're gonna fucking cook pasta. Yeah, I'm still gonna talk. I'm gonna murder you. <laughs> This is just gonna be the most unhinged episode. This is gonna be like the fucking most demons drinking during this episode. Episode all over again, and you're using your fucking phone as a microphone. This is this is gonna be using all of my work in quality. Fucking hell! So yeah, today it's we my are my episode. So we do what I want. We what can't... I want is to get drunk and, and eat pasta. We, you, it sounds like you're underwater. Don't put your phone down. It blocks the microphone, okay. you dweeb. Okay, can you hear me better now? <laughs> yeah. You fucking... Okay, I'll do, a, I'll do a Jaeger bomb to start the podcast. <laughs> yes, that's why I wanted to start <laughs> recording. <'cause> <laughs> let's <laughs> go! We're back in college, boys! <laughs> Yes. How does that feel? Terrible? It tastes like college. Yeah, it tastes like alcoholism and regret. I'm drinking water because it's fucking Monday. Fuck that. <laughs> Fuck water. Water's for pussies. Bruh. Look at this work. You're cooking with Herschel. Herschel on his fucking alcoholism arc. Making the pasta. That's that was nice, hot. That's a nice oven you got there. I'm gonna put a bun in your oven. It would have been funny if we could have heard it. <laughs> What's that face? Okay, so I'll have to control this shit show today. No, right? no, no, yeah, yeah. What are we talking about today? Why is today such a special day? <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't today feel is the like most it. Special day of the po today is the most special day of all time. It is so special that Urshel will be cooking dinner while I'm recording it. Yes, because that's that's when I think best, is when I'm being stupid as well. By the way, the cooking with oil with your shirt open is not a good idea you're asking for oil burns i'm midwestern i'll be fine i know you're retarded that wasn't the point <laughs> so no, I know. today we're talking about the infamous some people love him some people think he's a walking toilet bowl it's the jamie my, gillis my father Herschel's <laughs> dad who is now deceased, may you rest in peace. He's we're, getting. We're talking. We're talking two drastically different movies today. I swear to two God, hold your fucking phone. <laughs> we can't hear. I'm gonna. I'm gonna we're, kill we're, you. We're doing two drastically <laughs> different movies today. Do you have like AirPods? Something you can fucking. Yeah, I got AirPods. Hold on. Can you put them on? So you can leave your phone on the fucking... God. It's like... It's better? Yes, thank God. It's like fucking recording a podcast with on the short bus again. We're, we're talking two drastically different films. Francis thinks they're of different quality. Yes, one is actually a masterpiece and the other one is a torture device. And what two are they? And which one is the masterpiece? Because, you know... Uh, on the Prowl is clearly the masterpiece. Yes. <laughs> no, we're, we're talking... We're talking on the Prowl. And yeah. we're talking. 
on the prowl. We're opening we'll... a Misty Beethoven. Yeah, we'll start with the good one. So we'll start with the opening of Misty Beethoven, a film from 1976, I think, directed by <laughs> is it Rudger? Bradley Metzger. Rad... Bradley Metzger. Bradley Metzger. I'll just repeat whatever Russell says because it sounds like shit. <laughs> God damn. I'm uh, going to burn my house down in this episode. But yes, this was a first time watch for you. Yeah, so, so both I, of I them. will let you do the plot. Okay. Oh, yeah, they're both. But I'll let you do a, a recap because I've seen this a few times. Yeah, so the opening of Misty Beethoven stars Jamie Gillis and Constance Money which is a, a great name. And it's the story yes. of Dr. Seymour Love, a writer, a researcher that is, his expertise is in the naughty, sleazy stuff. So he's, a, he's played by Jamie Gillis. Yeah, he is played by Jamie Gillis, which if you only know Jamie Gillis from his later entry, you might not recognize him because he actually looks to be in shape in this one. Uh, oh, that's a little blow to my father. <laughs> so yeah, he plays. At least he's not shitting on people in this one. No, no, no. At least, well, he's shitting on the other character, but more in a meta, me, meta metaphorical way. Not. I thought you were gonna say methamphetamine way, and I was like, <laughs> no, yeah. no, we're not talking Roger Watkins today. Ooh, uh, <laughs> but he's also related to Jamie Gillis. Everything comes back to Jamie. All every road everything. leads to Jamie Gillis. Some somehow somehow everything always leads back to him. It doesn't matter what movie we're talking. It's like six degrees of Kevin Bacon, but as, if you watch anything from the seventies, like exploitation or porn wise, it's within like two steps to reach Jamie Gillis. Yeah, and because Jamie Gillis has been in a lot of things. I think it's like two hundred and twenty-three movies or something. Jesus Christ, he's more I prolific than. Here. Fucking who was that? Two hundred and thirty-three, two thirty-three, and that's not including his. <laughs> not oh including... Jesus Christ! What did you? Are you burning your house down? No, it says it says weak connection. Yeah, that might explain why the sound was a bit off. Wait, can anybody hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Can you see me? Yeah, I can see you. You're a bit delayed, but like I mean, visually, not mentally. Oh, I mean, mentally. Yeah, I was gonna say that's both. <laughs> but yeah, the opening of Misty Beethoven. So Doctor Seymour Love is kind of this adventurer, explorer, and he goes. I wasn't sure if the beginnings in New York or Paris, because there was a lot of French on the signs, but they mentioned New York a couple of times. So I assume it's New York, and he walks into this uh, this fuck theater, as I like to call him to a, watch a movie, I guess, but not really. His real goal is to find the subject of his future novel, which he will in Misty Beethoven. And Misty Beethoven starts the film off as this 42nd Street uh, hooker, and she enters the, uh, the theater to propose Jamie Gillis a night of good fun, which he accepts, but he has to give Misty 10 minutes because she has to do the deeds with Nepali ne Napoleon. And the already, greatest character of all fucking time. And already. With his old ass balls. <laughs> and, and his wrinkly penis. Already, it sets the tone for being a great comedy because it's literally an old ass dude who wears this like overcoat at first it then takes it off and he is dressed like literally the emperor Nepal napoleon and, and he's, he's at least he's at least in his mid-60s and at already, least already i was laughing my ass off but then he pulled out his silly hat <laughs> And then he takes yeah, out yeah. his old, old cock. Emphasis on old. His cock is ancient. Dude. His cock has been, his cock is older than this movie is old. Sex was invented and this cock was, was still there. <laughs> He's actually the inventor of sex. He is the oldest, and I texted Urshul during this, like, do you think he got paid or was just happy to be there? And the way he acts, I just think he was, 
he was like a he just offered to be there <laughs> oh yeah no he definitely he definitely he definitely was not uh being <laughs> was... paid much he was being paid in the suck so misty which by the way misty wears this shirt with like <laughs> credit card names she has like this white shirt with an american express and a mastercards logo which i did not understand why she had that because she's a fashionable lady yeah and uh yeah so she um she jerks off <laughs> Napoleon in the theater and Napoleon as the best cum face ever. He's just so happy to be there. Can we just can can we see the cum face reenacted, please? Yeah, he does kinda he does kinda look like he's stroking out. <laughs> Which he like, might have. I was worried about it. I was worried about the actor's health for a minute. I'm like, he is getting up there. It turned to be a it turned into a snuff movie at some point. So, I mean, I wouldn't put a pass to Jamie. Uh, maybe in his later entries, but I think he was a bit... Uh, Jamie in the 70s looked look to be more tame, I guess. At least in what I... Wait until Jamie gets to his 70s. <sighs> I, I don't think he made it, though. I think he was, like, his early... His late 60s when he died, I think. Oh, thank God. I could uh... be... I could... <laughs> Fuck. We, look, from what I saw on from on the prowl, the man didn't look healthy. On the prowl, on the prowl was like thirty years before he died, two or twenty years. Oh, no, I, I think he died in like twenty ten. Oh, fucking good. So it was, yeah, it was it was over twenty years. But yeah, so then, uh, then Misty goes um with uh good old shitster himself, Jamie, and from the and she brings him to like this brothel where by the way every scene almost in this film has somebody in the background getting blown which i applaud the the bravery and the the the, the like talent it takes cuz every scene they're just talking about something somebody's getting blown in the back yeah, that made my favorite one though. I mean, Radley Metzger away from this was like, he liked to show sex as being such a normal thing that it just happens in the background a lot. Like it's pretty much the entire concept of Barbara Broadcast, which once again also has Jamie Gillis in it. The thing is, um, the the first Red, uh, Radley Metzger film I saw, which I loved. It's probably my, my favorite, like, adult film is The Image. And what I liked is that... Who it, recommended that to you, by the The guy way. at the synapse table. The fuck off. Yeah, it was actually... I was, <laughs> I, was the one, I was the one who told you to watch it, though. I watched it, I'm like, this is a masterpiece. You're like, all right, I'll watch it. But I was at the synapse table buying Nikatsu movies, and the guy's like, if you like those, you'll like this one. <laughs> it just, you know, took some time to... Anyway, so that movie, like, it's a slow build up for this, the to, for the sex to happen, which I actually like because the image. I there's wasn't... there's not much hardcore in that one either. No, and the image is like I I didn't know it was a porn until like forty five minutes into it. Yeah, and but it this is mainly just an erotic movie. Yeah, this one just starts like the first scene is a a, a sex scene, so I was kind of off, <laughs> and then every scene. So she walks him into the brothel. He, then, wait, I actually took took notes because I was so appalled by how uh, much of an asshole the character was with Misty. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "You're the I'll proceed more love. <laughs> You're the nader of passion." <laughs> Jamie, oh Jamie. He's so charming in this movie, though. I love him so much. He is, but he just keeps insulting her, and she's just like, bro, I'm a fucking New York 42nd Street hooker. What do you expect from me? Also, let it be known that this movie takes place during the, like, five-year period where Jamie Gillis was attractive. Yeah. <laughs> After, like, 1980, it stopped. Yeah, it kind of dwindled down from... So at least in this, it's like an attractive guy being kind of an asshole instead of weird, creepy, old, fat Jamie Gillis being creepy. But, but I mean, but I mean, he's 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 weird and, and an asshole because he's, you know, 
He's afraid to admit his real feelings. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the thing, and that's what I like about this film. There's actual char character development. Oh, man, what, a, what an angle, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, POV, Francis is sucking your dick. Oh, my God. This is... I've seen some shit, but goddamn. Oh, he's doing another one. This motherfucker has to work tomorrow morning. How many minutes are we in? I did three shots so far. We're 15 minutes in. Oh. I'll pace myself a little better. <laughs> yeah, you gotta... Uh, I started walking. I started walking. My stuff started feeling a little funny. Are you done with your spaghetti? Yeah, it's okay. reheated Olive Garden. That's the secret to being a good chef. Let's uh, let some other cunt in the cook it, and then you just reheat it in the pan. I just threw up in my mouth. <laughs> it's good. Oh, shut the fuck up. I I did make cookies last night. For anybody wondering, look at this. Nice. <laughs> I fucking. Cooking with Urshel, just to re-eat your fucking previous night's olive garden. Yeah. But yeah. These are Spooky's condoms, by the way. <laughs> there were, uh... That's there right. were, I worked this morning, and outside the the door, there was just a, an open, like, used condom, which I'm not cleaning. Um, but yeah, <laughs> to get back to Mist. So... Jamie's kind of an asshole, but Misty, like, you can see that she doesn't really like uh, jerking off old guys dressed as French emperors in porn theaters for $5, which, inflation, goddamn. You know, at the, beginning, at, the, at the beginning of the movie, she is an amateur. Oh, she's... You know, she, has, she hasn't learned about the finer things in life, like Napoleon's wrinkled cock. <laughs> she's goddamn... She can't fucking suck a dick to save her life, goddamn it. But Jamie can. <laughs> but, he, but he does not in this movie unfortunately <laughs> uh, there is a scene that comes out of nowhere I wasn't expecting with a, a man getting pegged but that's that's way later it is, it's, a, it's a beautiful scene I that I might have busted a nut to that one um, but yeah so she implores Jamie Gillis to take her to I think Jamie's goal is to make her have sex with this uh, aristocrat kind. Is he like a writer? For he's gay. Is he? He's gay. That's no, the, that's point, the artist. But there's also the other guy with his wife. Oh yeah, yeah. So Jamie Gillis pretty much just wants to pimp out Misty Beethoven in this movie because he wants to turn her into like a lust symbol. Basically, it's but a along the way, he falls out. in love with her. Yeah, it's about pimping out, uh, pimping out Misty, but uh, for rich people, so it doesn't really count. It's like escorting. So That's for true. yeah, so she travels down to uh, I think they they go to France first, right? Yeah. Okay. And what happens in France? I kind of I just the joke about the the Italians in Rome is so hilarious that I kind of forgot anything that happened happened between. Yeah, that's another thing we need to touch. This movie is really fucking funny. This, like I said on my. Letterbox review. This is honestly the funniest comedy I've seen in years, which says a lot about the modern state of comedy. <laughs> Jamie Gillis really does say a lot about society. <laughs> but I mean, like, it's actually clever. Like, um, there is a scene that I noted where he just whacks philosophy, philosophy, and he's like, sometimes a woman has to swallow her pride. Speaking about, you know blowing yeah and then she <laughs> says like where do you take that from oh it's a quote from Ayman mandel <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, like Bradley this is... really wanted to make you laugh at high high quality highbrow humor while people are getting their cock sucked in the background i mean it's just funny this episode is definitely this episode is also getting age restricted oh yeah <laughs> The cunt of an equ uh, <laughs> the cunt of the year equ <laughs> Aquarius take it in the ass what won't don't they like this is just absurd. It really is a bizarre film than the fact that it exists. Oh my god! Because this is this is a sex comedy where the sex is real, but the comedy is like 
high bro it's so like there's there's a goddamn joke about chaekan uh, Ch- chenkai chick for fuck's sake <laughs> yeah, yeah. but there's also a joke about a woman on a plane and uh this oh, guy's God. wanting to, this guy's wanting she offers this guy a blowjob uh like the stewardess offers him a blowjob before they land and he's like how much time do we have and she's like 20 minutes and he's like all right and he hands her this like silver tube and she puts it in her in her vagina and she walks away and, and his wife or girlfriend sitting next to him goes what was that about and he's like he she helps me smuggle jamaican cigars into the united states she's like but those cigars are legal here and he points at her and he goes <laughs> The funniest I, fucking shit ever. I noted it, it cause I, but it's not illegal no. to import the Jamaicans. <laughs> you just tell her to be quiet. <laughs> oh god, that was funny as fuck. My favorite line is, Misty, Misty asks uh, Jamie, "What's the difference between New York and Ro- uh, and Rome?" And Jamie answers, "There aren't as many Italians in Rome." <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> I mean, the joke is in the movie. I don't mean that's true. It's so like, who wrote this? Is it? Because it's Radley Metzger. Oh, it's brilliant! Holy shit! I didn't know I would. I was Rad- gonna... Radley Metzger was was a master at dialogue. The dialogue is in inc- like it's really like everybody needs to watch this because it's it's hard to describe how funny it is because it's so and it's romantic. Cool. It's the only romantic porn that I've seen in a while. I, yeah. Like you actually care, you care about the relationship between Misty Beethoven and Doctor Seymour Love. Which yeah, and every time like Doctor Seymour Love says something bad about Misty, you're, I was always like, man, why? You clearly love her. Why do you have to be such a it's like macho piece of shit? But the ending is so on point for oh. the movie, too. I mean, not to spoil a 50-year-old porn for anybody <laughs> listening that you probably won't watch anyway. Um, but the end of the movie where he's getting blown by, the like, in this uh, nice, like, mansion. He's in this, like, nice robe. And uh, Misty, he's, like, thinking about Misty. There's, like, this flashback, and it's, like, a typical romantic comedy thing. But he's literally getting his fucking cock sucked. By a maid. During this. <laughs> yeah. Which and Misty every kind of maid. Taps her on the shoulder and starts doing it. And it's, like, and it's, like, it's the closest that I've ever come to shedding a tear in a fucking porn is when the maid gets switched over to get blown. <laughs> it's so fucking... Because he goes back to New... That scene is so sad. He goes back to New York into that It theater. is legitimately sad. That's the thing. It's, like, it's actually sad. That's the problem. It's, like, man, it's, it's like... Did you almost just cry during a 70s porn? It's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I did. I'm an emotional guy, too, and any time, like, a romance is... It's, well a, it's a very sweet... It's a very sweet movie, actually. It's so... Like, the... Radley Metzger, his sex scenes in his films always feel like part of the plot and not like superfluous. Maybe not the people just getting blown randomly in the back. No, but that makes it funny. That makes it funny, though. <laughs> it reminded me... Like, I mean, you, you gotta watch Barber Broadcast. That's the same thing. Like, there's a restaurant where they, they serve sex items on the menu. Like, a guy's getting a coffee, he's drinking, all getting head and shit like that. The airplane in this... So, the, the airline is, like, this airline where the stewardess, they just blow you. And my favorite part, first class... Sex, non-smoking, adult film, regular meal, little head. <laughs> like, and he's like, uh-huh, and he closes the menu. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I like I can't put like in words how much like this is the best comedy I- I've goddamn seen, and so yeah. So the point is, Jamie trains Misty to be like this sex goddess. And one of the goals is to turn this guy, like, this gay guy, straight. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and... Yeah, I mean, that's probably the least politically correct thing about this movie. This one, I mean, versus On the Prowl, this is definitely the more tame. Yeah, I mean, this... And it's so it's so great, because Misty doesn't want to do it, but, like, Jamie just convinces her. And during that time, like... Everybody in Rome and France knows about her, like, fucking random Yeah, because, I mean, she, she's blowing so many fucking people that, like, she becomes, like, a news story. Yeah, like, you have these old guys, like, how they would talk about, like, their health problems. They're talking about how, like, Misty Beethoven is such a great... <laughs> she's such a great yeah. whore. 
<laughs> like the cunt of the year. That's... It is. It is great, and it's wholesome because none of it is like objectifying her. Weirdly enough, yeah, that's what she's she... like. A, she's like. A, she's like a sports star, dude. And she doesn't like. She doesn't get fully nude until like the. Fuck! I think hour in. Yeah. Which it's so. It's weird. very restrained. It's very restrained for a porn. Yeah, because most of like the. It's, it's it's I mean it's a movie that doesn't even feel like a porn to be fair. That's no. why we covered this one. That's and that's we had to, we had to ease Francis into the second movie that we'll talk about eventually. <laughs> and that's the thing, right? It's because I, this honestly felt like a funny version of like Caligula in the sense where Caligula's sex is just there to build a story, and this is just there. The story just happens to be this writer who falls in love and pimps out this uh, this girl to his rich friends. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And yeah, Constance money is like it's just, she's just so sweet in this. You just feel bad for her whenever something and she's she was a, uh, you know. She was they everybody in this movie looks nice. I'll say that. <laughs> Yeah, the this... second movie. The second movie, I, I, it's only worth mentioning because in the second film, people look like fucking bums. Like this, like you can see the attention to details. You can. There was a makeup mm-hmm. artist. There was assistant. Oh yeah, like, so, because because I mean, this was this was in like the heyday of porn. Like this is an actual. Or it's like you movie. had to be a movie first. Yeah, you had to be a movie first. And uh, Radley Metzger was the master of this, as I can see. I've only seen two of his movies, and both of them are like five out of fives. Like to have master. Yeah, and Bar- Bar- we'll cover Barbara Broadcast eventually too, but that's another five for sure. Like, just I love the style. It's super classy. It feels like a, a European, uh, uh, softcore erotica film, but mm-hmm. classier than like hardcore. Your, yeah, hardcore and. Shit, it even feels classier than fucking the Emmanuel films. <laughs> notice, notice for anybody listening to the way you haven't really talked about like specific sex scenes or anything because the sex scenes like kind of like backseat story. The the only one that I like, bo- there's two that are really notable, and it's like when uh, Jamie finally has sex with Constance, which is like the boom, like you've been waiting the entire movie for that, mm-hmm. and which- and and. To be fair, as a porn, that seems pretty nice. I'm not saying that I jerked myself off to this movie, obviously, but I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, okay. For a lot of '70s porn, I feel like at least in our community, the people watch are roughies, which are like the least sexy thing ever. And the sex scenes in this at least feel like erotic in nature. The one where but you can be like you you can tell people are we're supposed to jerk off at the yeah. very least. Yeah. Unlike another movie work, <laughs> but, yeah, but the final, the final scene with Jamie and the one before that. So, like, that's what I say. At Red, about uh, Redley Metzger is, he makes you wait for the scenes that you really want to see, and the build-up is so incredible that you don't have a. a it's not an option. You have to blow your load eventually, <laughs> which I did. And Jamie, Jamie does. In this film, now today's today's point, the topic of today is Jamie Gillis. So let's talk about him a little bit. In this, he's he very a, good. <laughs> this is the movie that shows Jamie Gillis the, the half that's the actor, the artist, the the reason that he became popular in the first place. This is like this movie is literally like the movie that made him a star. This is like this is considered one of the best porn films ever made, if not the best. So this is kind of like what blew him up. Mm-hmm. Like he was in he was in like uh, reels and you know um, loops before this, but he wasn't anything like major really. And a pioneer, right? Because he wasn't like bisexual <laughs> reels. Right? Yeah, yeah, he was bisexual both professionally and in his real life. And this That's... film is very sexually open to a man gets pegged. Yeah. And it's not and it's not used as a joke. Nope. But it's very it's, also, it's very it's... well done. Dude. It's Yeah. And I'm not even into that shit, but you know that, that, that I'm not even into that film. That shit is something. <laughs> but like, yeah, and yeah. So you're the Jamie Gillis historian. Uh, that's a tough 
mantle to hold up, but yeah. I mean, you're I mean, out of the two of us. Yeah, yeah there was the guy that out of us in the sick, out of out of us in the sick on cinema boys. I probably know the most, or <laughs> relatively the most. Do you have that pure filth book? I really want that. No, because it's like hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, I know. Shit, you gotta sell more squirm fist to buy that. That's true. <laughs> But so he started in reels. Did you do you know how he got like discovered in bigger productions? Um, I'm not really sure. I gotta be honest. Like I'm not gonna like sit here and just give lies, but you know, it was the '70s. I mean, I'm sure he was friends with Radley Metzger, mm-hmm. or you know, I mean, and Radley was a pornographer too. So I mean, you know, circle, Jamie yeah, Circle was small too. He he had a a very unique appearance. Yeah, that's the, uh, yeah, that's 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 a way to say it. <laughs> so, um, I mean, this is this is like my credentials as a historian of Jamie Gill. Oh God, if it fucking loads. Yeah, yeah, I can see you. On the but there we go, there we go. Oh, we can't. My... Like, your camera was good until now. It's just. Oh my! Oh my fuck! <laughs> like your oh, camera was the best it ever had been. There but... we go. Okay. Oh shit! Is that? Uh, it's, it's real. It's a real Jamie Gitt- Gillis autograph. Damn! It's my most prized possession, <laughs> and I have an original poster of uh, Showdown. Hey, Jamie Gillis. Yeah. Yeah, I need to buy that. Ah. We'll, we'll we'll open it up real quick for the for the show. There's so much mantis in this episode. It's great. You just covering your camera with. I know, no, I'm turning it over. You fucking. For everybody, yeah, this is an original Grindhouse poster. I need to get it framed, but. Yeah. As you can see, Looks there's father. There's. Fun. This movie had a lot of people in it. This had Herschel Shab. God, Herschel Savage in it, and Nina Hartley, who. Who? Uh... Well, well, Nina Hartley is a formative part of my teenage years. Oh yeah, same. She uh. The grandmother we, we, of the adult industry. <laughs> fun fact, she was also in Boogie Nights, which yeah. also ties back to Jamie Gillis. Yeah. Because there is a part in this movie that is supposed to be, like, the second movie that we're talking about today. Yeah, so... I, I, which Francis I, doesn't like. Boogie Nights is um, in my top four. It's probably my favorite, like, non-exploitation genre film. And I didn't know that it was based, some scenes were based, well, I knew the John Holmes connection, kind of. Yeah, and, I mean, John Holmes is Dirk Diggler. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, but that's pretty, like, surface level. What I didn't know is that one of my favorite scenes, which is now ruined, by the way, was taken straight from the 1989 Straight to video classic. adult film. Fucking classic. And the most important film that we'll ever talk about. Dog shit, painful, dreadful, 64 minutes. A of... Historically accurate, important, beautiful masterpiece. Look, the Nazi regime is also historically important. That doesn't make it good. <laughs> yeah, but On the Prowl is good. So we're talking On the Prowl and... I'm going to let Big Urshel explain this one, because you're going to need to be a very oh, staunch, boy. staunch Jamie Gillis apologist for this pile of fucking waste of time. No, no, okay. <laughs> On the Prowl is, I mean, the story is a, I mean, it, you know, not a story, is a Jamie Gillis and porn star Renee Morgan um, driving around in a car. Elderly so, Jamie I think Gillis. It, it, he's not elderly. He's like fifty. Fuck. Disgustingly. He's, he may. He may. He may not even be fifty. He may be like in his forties. A I terrible think he's 50, forty. But, um, forty going on eighty-five. But they they were going around in a uh, limousine, trying to pick up random people on the road to sleep with, um, you know, her, Renee Morgan, in the in the back of the car. And record it. It's, but it is widely considered the, like, progenitor or one of the, like, original gonzo porn films. So. Now. Yeah. Is it, 
good. Yes. <laughs> no. It's, it's fuck it's, off. It's a five. It's second hand. the barrels of fucking five. It's second hand it embarrassment. Second-hand embarrassment. The, it is second hand embarrassment. It's it is disgusting. It, it is beautiful. It's ugly. It is beautiful. It is a- not getting hard while a camera is in front of a limousine. So there's one shot during the entire time, and anytime something happens, it's out of focus. It's too close because it's just like real shit. life. And then it's just like real life. Jamie Gillis won't shut up during the entire time, and all he does is moan and do and say comments that are just disgusting. He is a disgusting yeah. human being, and. At first, I was like, at least he won't, you know, he won't be having sex with anyone, which, he, thank God, he doesn't, but he does have some He does, weird... I think, I think he, he, oh he diddles himself a little bit, though. And there's some makeout sessions with, like, two girls, and it's so awkward, and it's, you can see that they're, like, they don't, ah, uh, it's, it's, it's disgusting. It's the worst, like, it's not erotic. This is, this is, this is the Mondo Jamie Gillis movie. This is Mondo, New York, directed by a pornographer. It's so this is the only one directed by Jamie Gillis that we'll ever cover. Thank God. <laughs> um, it's... yeah, he does speak perverse. <laughs> he he kind of does the mo- like old like creepy guy moan from like JV movies. Such as cock. And it's... but it's not not even that deep though. He's like he's like yeah, touch that guy's cock. Touch his cock. <laughs> And the point of this film is not him. He only holds the microphone and the lights, but he still puts the microphone up to his face, so the only thing we can hear is... Oh, oh the fuck is cop. Oh, the fuck is cop. <laughs> well, you yeah. can hear him breathe. <laughs> I'm a disc- I shit on women. <laughs> We're not talking about walking toilet. I know, but it's in the same era. <laughs> I was about 10 years prior, actually. I, I don't care. It's fucking terrible. Walking Toilable is like late 80s, early 90s. This is from 1989. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was different from <laughs> I have been drinking, to be oh. fair. Dude, the first... Okay, so it starts with... This yeah, this is this is gonna be a long discussion for this film, I have a feeling, because this is only a movie you can talk about scene by scene. Yeah, so it starts with f- disgusting, unhealthy, f- gross looking Jamie Gillis mm-hmm. with decent Also look- before we start, I'm going to be the defender of this movie and say why you should watch it and not let Francis <laughs> fucking persuade you not to watch it. Yeah, so so Jamie introduces the concept, and he does it very awkwardly. And then you're quick to realize that this is going to be painful. This is just going to be awkward discussions between Jamie Gillis and some people. And he presents the crew, which is Rene Morgan, who um, I'm sure looks good, but not in this one, because nothing looks good in this one. You can see the wrong bad. You can't, you can't insult no. her. Okay. It was fun. But you can smell the hairspray and the, the Jamie sweat. The J- you know Jamie yeah, had true. bad this movie, this, this movie, this movie is real. This movie is really fucking sticky. <laughs> like, this movie is like going through Florida in the middle of summer in like a swamp. And you're just a shirt sticking to your back and you got fucking swamp ass. You know what I'm talking about? Because there is, it's like... Jamie late- Gillis is human swamp ass in this movie. It's late night. It's in LA. You know it's humid. And you know Jamie doesn't wear deodorant because why would he? And he's just this little fucking goblin looking guy. And he's just like, I'm going to... So we're at new concept. I would say from, what, I, fucking... I've, from what I have heard, Jamie Gillis was not a like unkempt man. So I don't think he smells that bad. But, you know... The movie in, feels in, like in, in execution. The movie, the movie feels stinky. <laughs> and then he presents, you know, the driver, which she doesn't play an important role. She presumably just... is actually just a driver. <laughs> and yeah, she just drives. And have you ever been in a limousine, Urschel? I have. Yeah. It's not that like. There's a reason why this trend went to buses. A limousine is really small. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's the reason why it's bang bus and not bang backseat. Yeah, so 
you can you know that there's the action that's gonna happen is gonna be awkward like you're 16 in your dad's car with your first girlfriend like this is gonna be that for 60 minutes and who wants to relive their experience their first experience in your dad's back seat wh- for 60 minutes I mean I would argue that this film is better for that though to be honest no <laughs> because i mean no no hear me out hear me out jamie gillis's goal was to make something realistic okay he was it, like you may not like it okay i'm i understand you don't like it I, I'm, I'm with you i get it but he he went out to make something that was realistic and you know real people are not gonna act like jamie gillis because I feel like the difference, like, and I'll, the like... first guy, the first guy, in this, God, there's two people that take place in the first part. Oh my God. One of the dudes is a fucking douchebag. Yeah. I have to say, I don't know if he's still alive, but fuck him Hopefully if he is, he's a dick. But before that, they record somewhere and they get kicked out and they kept it in the movie. <laughs> Yes, they don't cut anything in this. <laughs> there is no so yeah, and then they find their first two lovebirds, and one of them has this disgusting mustache, which makes him look like forty years older. And he, is he in like a wife beater, like he's in a tank top? Yeah, it it should be known that the first two is two male friends yeah. who are you know heterosexual. Yeah, because I mean they make it pretty fucking obvious. Um. And he picks them both up, and one of the men is obviously a lot more into it than the other one. He can actually get and, uh <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, he looks at least, like, 15 years older than the other guy. It could just be because of facial hair, but, you know. Um, Look, we can talk shit about that Jamie, guy all we want. At least he can get it up, and he somewhat... Yeah, but I feel like that guy's, like, a high school bully that never grew up. Yeah, well, that's... Like, he, and, and to even in, you know, this is movie so real that, like, these aren't characters. These are real people. So when I say that that dude is a terrible friend, he's a fucking horrible friend. Mm-hmm. And he talks like he's it's, gonna it's, be it's like... one of the most. It's so fucking awkward. He plays this, like, big game where he's like, well, what should I sign, like, my stage name? And then Jamie's like, we're not gonna make a star out of you, which, yeah, you're not. Yeah, he's like, he's like, he's like, do whatever the fuck you want to do. He's like, yeah, I don't give a shit. You look like my uncle. I mean, Jamie does keep it very real in this. Yeah, that's... Jamie keeps it very real during this. He's like, he's like, nah, fuck you, I don't give a shit. Yeah, that's the thing. At least Jamie keeps it real. (laughs) Yes. And then his friends and... just, like, can't get it up. And what does the movie do? The point of this movie? Not film the people that are actually doing it. They film the guy yes, that this can't movie, this get movie it up. Like, this movie's like a, this movie's a hidden camera show disguised as a porn. It's just to make fun of the one guy. They like, film... he's still man. He's, he's, it's so awkward. He's just watching his friend getting his dick sucked, and he's like... Though a hundred... The thousand yards stare while his friend is getting blown next to him, and he like can't... yeah, because I mean, at first he doesn't want to look. No, he does. He kind of looks to the side. He's like doing this a little bit, and then he looks at it and he gets the thousand yard stare, like he's a knob. <laughs> and why do we know this, Urschel? Because during the entire because time, because they zoom in on him because he's the best part. <laughs> it's it's hard to it's hard to explain why this is so good. It's like this is like if you like cringe. Like, that's, if you're watching those Friends compilations, like, that with, with the kid that's, like, at the Minecraft place, like, you want to, he's like, how much dedicated wham? It's like that, but a fucking sex scene. That's great. That's the difference. I think why you can enjoy these types of, I can't do cringe. I cannot. It is. It's... This is cringe compilation, 1989, 60 minutes long, and it has hardcore sex in it. Oh, my God. So, yeah, so. He gets like he 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 does. Oh no, the condoms! Oh my god! <laughs> and he does not fucking shy away from showing the entire condom put on. The whole process is there, and, and this then, is like a fifteen-minute scene. And then you have Uncle fucking Jamie over there trying to tell the other guy, "It's it's okay. It's all it's in the business. One out of ten guys can't get it up. It's okay. I've done this for a lot of years. I can't get it up sometimes too." That's not. That's also not true. Jamie never had trouble getting it up. 
<laughs> no. But every time Jamie was on camera, he's like, I'm fucking there. It's just so vi it's it feels so vicious because he's trying to uh, uh, like tell him yeah, that it's is, okay while Jamie the cameraman is... films him the entire time. This feels like the meanest, most. It is a mean spirited movie. <laughs> mean -spirited. It is Be like the fact that it's not cut is mean as fuck. <laughs> and like, oh, ironically, like Jamie has the balls to tell the guy, and the camera just stays on him, being awkward, having the thousand yard stare while his friend is enjoying it. I know it's, and the thing is, it's like you have to watch these sweaty ass normal people, like. In concept, like everybody, you know, everybody in their life has had some fantasy at one point, right? Mm. But what happens when the fantasy becomes a reality and your best friend is there while it's happening? <laughs> it's as awkward as that fucking sounds. You never want to meet like the dude. Ones. Like the dude, the dude is trying to act like he's in a movie, but they're literally just trying to film awkward shit. Oh my God. It's it's a very unique mood. To this film, like this is not even like future Gonzo movies. <laughs> this is not like Bang Bus '89. I mean, it's like the progenitor of that, but you know, those guys would edit the shit out of that. And you know, all that set up. This is actually not set up. There's, <laughs> yeah, it's just this doesn't feel like it was meant to be erotic. There is the the cum shot is out of focus on a black screen. You don't see shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which good? They did that guy dirty. I'm sure he fucking spurted three fucking little drops. That piece of shit. I mean, I would argue that this is one of the least erotic porn films ever made. I was thinking. But I also think that's like, like almost the point. I don't know. I was thinking to myself while watching it, like I'd have an easier time getting it up at terrible meal. <laughs> at least they were stars. <laughs> At least, at, least least. They, at least they at least they were like paid yeah what would be worse than this is picking up guys and girls from the street to replicate terrible meal. <laughs> <laughs> i mean jamie almost did that with the fucking global oh my god and i know you you you, you haven't seen walking no. global but i'll talk about it at the end of the episode because people will want to fucking know and i've seen a few of them. yeah so what's the next um, scene? The next scene, is it the one where they try to pick up a girl, but she, like... Yes, okay, oh this is God. actually my favorite part of the movie, though. Unironically, it's my favorite part I, of the movie. I hate it. It's probably the worst, because Jamie's all touchy. Uh, her name's Linda. Okay. They're, they find this woman named Linda, and she seems to be very into things, and Jamie is, yeah, as you said, very touchy. And he's kissing on her. And doing all kinds of weird shit. Um, and it looks like she's into it. And then it's like literally five to ten minutes of just like building this shit up. And then she backs out. And Jamie says the coldest fucking line of all time. My By far my favorite Jamie Gill's quote is... Um, he's like, she decided to back out. He's like, we're going to keep walking around trying to find, you know, a couple of guys or a dyke or something. Oh, that's his quote, not mine, by the way. Um... <laughs> Well, not the first slur you dropped. <laughs> it won't be the last. No. Um, he's like, uh, he's like, until Linda, wherever you are, good night. Oh, my, he's such a piece but of no, shit. That's, no, 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 actually, he says, until Linda, good night, wherever you are. That was the actual quote. Yes. And it's like, man, what a fuck you. <laughs> it's so cold. The woman you spent the last five he's like, minutes he, he, just like, fondling ah, in the bathroom. Damn. Yeah, for real. He fucking tosses her. <laughs> leave it. Like, love you him have to leave watch him. the movie to understand how fucking cold it is. And I feel like that moment sums up the entire film. Like, Jamie Gillis is kind of. You know, he's an ass. That made me so uncomfortable, that entire thing. I like, did. he's like, this is this is like Jamie Gillis. It's like, it really shows that he's an actor in Misty Beethoven. Yeah, he wasn't like. You know. At least in certain, like, he was a, a layered man. He was like an onion. Well, there was some prophecy but, in Misty Beethoven about him talking about beating women. Carol! <laughs> Carol! I don't want to talk about Carol right now. That's <laughs> uh, Carol is the real star of Jamie's life. So, Shout out to Carol. I don't know if she's alive, but presumably, based on what happened to her and what was going on, she's probably not. Let's be honest. Let's, 
Let's hope she had a tough life. So after Linda, we get the three yeah. boys. We get the boys. <laughs> the, the boys. The Miller High Life <laughs> drinking boys. The real live footage of what would happen if me, if us, and the sitcom cinema <laughs> boys were in this situation. <laughs> The boys. The boys. So there was. I re just remember. I want to clarify. That was a joke. None of us are that disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. There. This movie just has this aura of filth around it. The fucking the Miller. The Miller. Like the. Yeah, but even if we were, if even if all of us were all single, and horny as fuck, none of us would ever go to this level of depravity. Yeah. <laughs> Why are my nickels sticky? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's just say this movie reminded me of a special time in my life, but that's for later on. <laughs> but yeah, the boys, the re only one I remember the name is Mars, because I thought that was <laughs> funny. That his name was Mars. So, first of all, there's not enough space for the five people in the back seat. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, even. Yeah, if it was. There's a lot of limbs crossing. I don't even think the guys in the scene knew who they were touching at points. Like, they could have grabbed the cock and not have known. The, and Jamie starts next to uh, uh, Renee, and he do, it looks like he doesn't want to leave, because, like, the, one of the boys just tries to join in, and he just stays there, and he's like, finally, after a while, he's like, oh yeah, that's right, I'm not the one that's the star in this, I just hold the microphone. He literally holds the microphone next to a guy's cock in this scene, too, which I found very amusing while watching. Um, because they have a I'm bad Jamie Gillis microphone. fan. This was this 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 watching was the first time I've seen it all the way through. Oh, I I barely made it all the way through, but I didn't skip, which was probably without amazing. ejaculating. Oh my, God. dude, the this sound... is the least erotic scene in the movie. I just got like, and that's that's fucking saying something. Like this is sweaty frat bro Friday night energy to the max where they're kind of hiding that you know they may like each other a little bit more than they let on oh my just the the open Miller eye life that they share between all of them just the stickiness yeah. Yeah. the sound is terrible through the entire thing you can definitely oh. tell this is pre-covid <laughs> as you the soundtrack Sipping off the same beer. The soundtrack of this is just like I said in the chat. This could be somebody's noise project, and I wouldn't know the difference. It is um, audio is not great. This could be the soundtrack of a fetish yeah, gore the underground movie, and I wouldn't realize it. I won't say any production studios or anything, and it's probably wouldn't even be a production studio anybody would even imagine anyway, but, you know, a lot of jokes can be made. <laughs> it just sounds... Oh, it looks awful. It sounds awful. The people are awful. Just the... It is... I don't know how they found, like, this fucking nasty of people. <laughs> They are so fucking gross. Like, er like Jamie literally gets a run for his money in this film. You think that Jamie's going to be the greasiest fucker? But I mean, I would argue that the first dude with the mustache is the worst. But in this one, I mean, all all of the men in this this third part are fucking hideous looking and so God, heavy breathing and un untarred cock. Like it's you just... see these like unsexy, unerotic scene and all you hear is oh you yeah, suck his cock, suck his fucking <laughs> suck his cock <laughs> suck his cock <laughs> but, then, but then he puts the microphone down there and you start, you, like it's it, the audio is so bad that you only hear like hers <laughs> blowing him like once in a while so it'll just be like quiet and then you see <laughs> and she's just doing these clearly like fake little moans of just eh, eh, eh. <laughs> yes, that's the only put on part, and it really shows how fucking dumb these guys are because they think she's enjoying it. Oh, um, the final guy! Like we haven't made it to the the final guy, but like when the three bros, the three boys are together, none of them can get it up. They can't even sit all four on the. Yeah, because it, it really, it really, it really does show how fucking awkward the situation would be. Dude. Like that's the part that's most realistic is they can't get it up because if you're sitting next to the homies. You know, and like you didn't really think this through before you get there, but like once somebody's getting their dick sucked, like you're you're there. These guys were probably like that's just... the thing. That's why it's so awkward. 
they were probably because you can like, tell that like some of these guys would leave if they could. Like most of these guys were probably just like at a nightclub or at a bar, just mm-hmm. with the boys. They weren't expecting for this to happen, and it shows. It is genuinely like a fantasy moment, but then the fantasy comes and they don't know what to do. They they are at a loss for words. Like they do not know anything. <laughs> I mean, fuck. This, I like I gave this a five, but this is like a five of like cringe for me. Like this is a movie that you know, I think some people will really appreciate because I mean you are the person who gave it by far the lowest score on my friend list who have seen it. I see Shout out to Jacob Green for giving it a four. Jacob Green's porn scores, ace. <laughs> if, Jacob, if you're watching, Dude, I did not I like your style too. How I Thanks was... for following me. I don't understand how I was one of the lowest on the entire goddamn application of Letterboxd. Yeah, I mean, this movie, I think this movie actually has about the same average score as Misty Beethoven. Dude, this has a 5 um, but it also something. Has, but I it's mean, also, it's only, it's only rated by 92 people, to be fair. I mean, it's 92 people too many. <laughs> Misty Beethoven. Oh, Misty Beethoven has a higher, but it's also rated by 1.1 thousand, so... Let's talk about the final boy. I mean, Misty, Misty Beethoven's a classic. Yeah, the final it. boy. Oh, my. So he's one Shockingly. of the boys. No, no, no. no here's, the, here's the thing, though. The final boy, good for him. That's all I can think. Good for him. He's the only one that, like, he really fucking goes for it. He's probably the, like, the only one that you're like, okay, if I was in the 80s in, like, a dingy basement all by myself watching this, I could probably get a half chub and get it all the way but i mean yeah that's what's weird because it's like they get this this last guy which is this is part of the boys i genuinely i genuinely really love this scene like this is like the least awkward scene um but i i kind of like the guy like weirdly because like he's not a bad looking guy he's there he's on his own and it's like he's it's the only time that there's a sex scene with no other people and that's the thing. He like, it's was, just him. He was part of the group, and like a normal human being, he was like this entire thing of the boys looking. Which, kudos to this film. Not only did they pick up guys, they got them blown. They also gave them a lift mm-hmm. to anywhere they wanted after. Yeah, true, true. So I mean, you know, on paper, on paper, I mean, this is filling, fulfilling their fantasies, too. Like, I mean, if they actually enjoyed it, this would be like, you know... Like winning the lottery for some of these people, but I mean the but thing don't. is that they were friends. Because when the three boys are together and like they film like them like just looking at each other, it's awkward. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, they drop off the boys, and then one of the boy is like, "This would probably work better if I was by myself," which of course it would. <laughs> the only smart one, the only... and he also has a fucking hog. <laughs> He like does. the last guy's the last guy actually looks like he does porn. It could be an industry play. Like like he like that's that was what I was thinking too. I'm like, maybe they did hire the last guy because his dick is big, he's well like pent up. Yeah, he knows he like, he you know, he he like knows how to work the scene weirdly. The cum shot. Like is he well does done. things they Yeah. Like good for him. That's what I was thinking. I'm like good for this guy. Yeah, I think this guy's the real one. This guy. And they just drop him off. <laughs> they just drop him off, and he just walks away. Yeah. He and it's just... like you know this guy is gonna remember that moment for the rest of his life, but you have a feeling that like he'll keep this to himself. Doesn't he mention that he has like, he has a girlfriend? Though? I... Yeah, I think so. <laughs> well, did he? I think. I know. I think he was going on a date. I think yeah. he was going on a date. But after he, I don't cut. think. I don't think he said it was his girlfriend. I think it was like a first date. So I mean, after he, to comes, be fair to him, I mean, he wasn't like cheating on somebody. No, after he comes, though, he looks like he kind of like regretted it for a bit because he's like there, like, and then he he kisses her though. Bit. Yeah, he gets into it, but he's, you can see in his eye that it might not. Like, he's going to remember this. But when he kisses her, it was kind of sad. It was yeah. kind of sad. Like, I just wanted him to have a nice relationship. I was like, I hope this guy finds somebody. I mean, he's probably... With his, with his fucking hog. He's... His hog and his nice hair. If he's not an industry plant, he probably, like, like any normal guy from this era, he probably has a family, a house somewhere. 
two kids, mm-hmm. an alcohol yeah. addiction. Um, but for the moment, but for the moment, he was a star, was, and that's what's important. He's the. I don't know. It was. It was weird. It was a weird moment. He was the only one that was competent. But still, this also, movie is also, so... Speaking of girlfriends, though, let us add to the douchebag factor. The first guy, he says that he has a girlfriend. Oh, yeah, he The did. first fucking guy with the mustache. He's a fucking cocksucker. That dude is such a douche that, like, it actually was making me angry during that scene. And I just felt like the, that entire scene, I just felt bad for the friend. I just, oh my god, his, I hope his friend found some new friends, because he, he didn't deserve that. Yeah, I mean, that guy was a fucking dick. You know that douchebag came out of that car like, yeah, man, I fucked her good. She enjoyed that. Which she didn't. I, I came, I, I came to drop. Yeah, I came by. Two more than I usually do. Yeah, yeah. I usually pull him. The last one, like the last one only happens when I go to, the, when I go to the Humane Society and I see the dog. <laughs> yeah, he just, um, it's so sad, they film him walk away during the time. Yeah, but but the last guy, it's like when they are filming him walk away, Jamie Gillis like literally, it's the only moment in the film where he's not like treating him like a chump, and he's like he's like, man, that guy was great, wasn't he? Yeah. Like it was like the one time that yeah. like we found a good one there. Yeah, I oh you couldn't hear all I could hear was. Fucking movie yeah, sucks. We need subtitles. <laughs> that movie. Someone subtitle on the prowl. <laughs> like Vinegar Syndrome released this on 4K. Is this as bad Please, as? Please, you released Taboo, and Taboo's fucking horrible. I think I God gave the damn, same score that's as my one on the prowl. <laughs> you keep Taboo. No, see, I gave I gave Taboo the same score as you gave on the prowl, which is a 1.5 out of five. God, I fucking hated this. This was. I watched this yesterday. It was the longest hour of my life. I texted the boys like 45 minutes left. And it Yeah, I I was actually surprised. I thought you were going to appreciate this one a little bit more at least. I expected like a 3. I gave uh, the half star was for the content, the one star for was for the historical importance. I fucking hated this. <laughs> But you gave Mr. Veto one of five. Yeah, because so. that was a movie. The rare, that the was rare, a good movie. The rare, the rare spooky five. That was actually well you made. Coerced. You were coerced by me into giving it a five and not a 4.5. I mean, like, uh, I always have a difficult time on a first time watch giving us something a five. It is. It's, it's such a beautiful movie, though. But that's, that's a great movie. On the Prowl is 60 minutes of cringe and long, terrible, drawn-out scenes, awful sound, awful people, awful quality, it sounds like shit, it looks like shit, the people are shitty, Jamie Gillis has a punchable face, he breathes way too no, hard, he, doesn't. he should get his he lungs does checked hard. out. <laughs> He's okay. Also, for, any, for anybody that's getting into Jamie Gillis, watch this movie and then Google Rodney Moore. I just, I really want to say that to people because Rodney Moore is like the guy that's, you know, around the same age as Jamie Gillis um, and tries to be like him. And it's really fucking annoying. So, I mean, I just know because I was like, you know, I put stuff in mixtapes and I was trying to find stuff. And let's just say he's done a couple of odd things in his time. But he, from when like watching those, he literally tries to, he literally, number one, looks like Jamie Gillis, like he has the same fucking hair. He's like a little bit old, an older guy. Who was that? Same fu- like. Hold on, I'll, I'll text it to you. Hold on. Spooky will Spooky will testify that this guy does look identical to uh, That's the fuck. Jamie Gillis. Hold on. Hold on. Show me your car. He was actually from around the same time too. Is he like? God, I'm trying, trying to find the thing where he's. How big is his hog? He. Um, you know, uh-huh. we're, we're not going to talk about that right now. We're not here to talk about Ron anymore. Uh, oh, right. I'm just saying that it's funny. It's it's just funny that you can see Jamie Gillis's influence today in some things. Oh, it's a modern guy. Yeah, that's what I mean. Oh. Um. I can't find anything but the women that have been in this video, but this trust me, bro. Oh, I can. Wait, I I have his images. Oh, sh- yeah. He look, he does look the same. He has the same style, and he talks in the same mannerisms as him. Wait, 
I I didn't I found the m musician, but not the. Uh, he's also a musician. Oh, so it's the dude with the curly hair. It's the same guy. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, he does look like what the. Yeah, that's what I mean. He literally ripped off his silence oh in God. 2023, and he's still active. I hate this dude. Yeah. The guy. The girl has a. Did you just show tits? No. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you just showed tits. I couldn't find an image of him without tits, so I didn't I send it to you. I survived a Rodney blast. Fuck off. Oh, mm -hmm. Those are tits. I didn't show them. That. Okay, now I found the tits. <laughs> oh. No, but I mean, like, I just, it's just funny that you can see people still trying to, like, rip off Jamie Gillis. Hopefully they don't rip him off too much. Huh? Am I right? The fucking yeah, Rodney you guys want to talk about the walking toilet bowl? I'm drunk enough to talk about it. Let's. All right. So also, just I'm also conclude... proud of myself for keeping this in order as much as I can. Yeah. I'm like pretty intoxicated right now, actually. You've done yeah. You've done two Jagger bombs, three shots, some more of your Tootsie Roll. I'm on my fist. I'm on my fist. I'm on. You're all fucking. You're all faded and shit. This is the this is the best I've been on the podcast too. I just need to be a slightly inebriated. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna force you to drink every episode. <laughs> And then I'm gonna <laughs> it would be a better I was like, man, did the podcast get more professional? Yeah. Oh shit, they actually just talked the, about the movies start, instead of being, shitting start, on Massacre. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not in the mood for that. Yeah, no. I started being like Burt Kreischer. I just like walk around without my shirt on and talk about J.B. <laughs> I'm uh, sure people But yeah, The Walking Toilet Bowl. <laughs> An important, important thing in Jamie Gillis's career. The thing? Not is, even is the movie. The, uh, <laughs> No, I mean, in general, the Jamie Gillis home videos. Universe, Cinematic Universe. <laughs> the Jamie Gillis home videos. <laughs> Watch out, the Marvel. The GCU. <laughs> the GCU, the Gillis Cinematic Universe. <laughs> the Walking Toilable is one of the originators of the Avengers. <laughs> Carol's one of the Avengers. Carol unites with... The fucking she's Captain Marvel. <laughs> she's, she's Captain Marvel, but instead of a suit coming out of her shit. She just gets shit. She's like, she's, she's like in that part in the game where he says, I'm Iron Man. She's got shit on her. And this sounds like... Oh, oh. And he's like... He's like... <laughs> standing there and he goes I'm a star and she goes <laughs> <laughs> fuck it's not funny <laughs> oh god poor okay. Carol anyway. she just wanted to do yeah, some Carol... quick dash and she got shit on <laughs> <laughs> she did it three times <laughs> she kept coming back fool me once shame on you fool me twice <laughs> shame on me <laughs> Fool me three times because I must be fucking Carol. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck me. Car Carol's a legend. We don't talk about the fourth entry because the fourth entry has a title that would get us banned. Uh, Jamie Gillis was taking it back to the fucking 1800s of that one. <laughs> Not the 1800s, the 1700s. Could you imagine Jamie Gillis as a slave owner? <laughs> <laughs> he just, he just still be like, mm, yeah. Uh, sorry, pick up that cotton. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Uncle Tom. But Jamie Gillis is the director. <laughs> it just, <laughs> yeah. I got so I got two races. I should have said this for my races. All right, I'm Jamie in Gillis, eighty Jamie right Gillis now. <laughs> Jamie Gillis might have been a little bit racist, but you know we won't hold that against him for the time being today. I mean, he did the a lot time of bad being, things. It was the 1990s. <laughs> you couldn't shit on people and call them racial slurs in the 90s. Yeah, but you could be you could be Jerry Seinfeld dating a 17 year old at age 38. <laughs> that's yeah, that's the thing. At least Jamie Gillis didn't do New that, Yorkers. unless. New Yorker. Uh, anyway. Home videos. Jamie Gillis did a series of like uh, private VHS tapes for private buyers, and uh, the Walking Toilet Bowl, as it's so lovingly called, was a scat video starring a hooker named Carol, <laughs> uh, a real hooker that he actually hired. Um, from the excerpt that I've read, 
from Filth by Peter Sotos, who's also a fucking piece of shit. Um, there's an excerpt that Jamie said that he... Well, I mean, we'll talk about this in a future episode. I'm too drunk to talk about the fucking actual biography of the man. Uh, but he was, like, either the owner or, like, one of the lead people at this, like, uh, porn shop. That was, like, a huge shop. Um, and he was talking to a friend of his, and they were talking about this uh, hooker of a guy near named Carol who was into shit play. Um, and, of course, Jamie calls her up, and uh, things get a little messy. And Jamie Gillis just had IBS and there wasn't a bathroom nearby and Carol had her mouth open. Um, so Jamie Gillis considered like, you know, one of the greatest porn actors ever, you know, was shit love him or her. hate him. I mean, you, love him or hate him. I mean, you know, that's just a true thing. Uh, he literally filmed a scat tape with a hooker. And not only is it a scat tape, it is a hateful mean-spirited as fuck thing where Jamie Gillis just humiliates her. Oh my god. And, uh, I mean, I don't know how much I can say on YouTube without, like, getting X-rated or some shit, but... Is that uh, the one where... It goes where it doesn't go. Uh... It's not supposed to go. It goes in a different part of the body. That's not just the mouth. Uh, he, he puts his shoes in it and then rubs it on a certain part of her. God. And there was three of these with Carol... Why did she come back? Because she was into it, and that's what nobody wants to, you know, think about because it's so horrifying. Oh, well, uh, and I assume it looks. There's also too, there is like also VHS a Jamie 80s. Gillis. There's a Jamie Gillis home video where uh, he's also with a hooker and he's eating her out while she's smoking crack, and she burns a, his back with his with her crack pipe. Um. Man, he, so Dr. The, Seymour Love, he, the uh, he downfall, shit. the downfall of Dr. Seymour Love to being burned by a crack pipe. Yeah. And when he died, I mean, Jamie Gillis was remembered as like, you know, by friends as like this great guy. You know, I mean, like, none of us will ever meet Jamie Gillis, okay? And anything that's like said about him about like, you know, non-consensual things or the fact that he was like, Question twice in a murder. I'm sorry. Um, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. What? Uh, yeah, yeah. Jamie Gillis was questioned as a um, suspect in a murder. <laughs> he was accused twice. Um, it was. Uh, <laughs> oh, forgot the name of the guy. Um. Yeah, but there was a murder. Um, Man, vintage porn actors just hit different. For real. <laughs> Literally, they, um, they would hit people. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> yeah. He, was, he was like a prince of pornography, but he was like the joker of porn. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know... I'm not going to sit here and pretend that Jamie Gillis was a good guy. You know, like, I don't, I mean, I don't think anybody will sit there and, like, try to argue that he was, like, you know, a good person. But I also don't think any of us will ever meet him. I mean, obviously, only because he's fucking dead. But it's <laughs> I like. I can send you to him if you want. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's hard to base his character on reports by other people. Yeah, but I mean. I mean, I mean, I think he's a piece of shit. I mean, when there's a home video of you, I just with a hooker. Yeah. It also, it also, it also has to be. It also has to be known. When the shit meme, three films the meme of in the you group chat. shitting and abusing a hooker. With four, shit. four, four, because including one because with a very four. racist title. I think it's safe the, to assume. The, the non-racist title is Brown on Ebony, which is still pretty fucking racist, to be honest. So, I can only assume that Jamie might have been a bad boy. Yeah. No, I'm no I, I don't know what I was even trying to say with this. I think he's an ass. But, like, 
self reporting he also, but, but he, you know he was also a great actor and a great performer and like an important part of history of like adult cinema and you know i mean even cinema in general i mean he's he was in the movie of sylvester stallone yeah so with that logic i mean you know hitler this is definitely a case of like separate the art from the artist Separate the penis from the man. Yeah. Castrate his memory. Castrate his memory. We didn't even talk about his cock. He's got a mole on his cock, and it's like his most obvious feature. Yeah, like if you put his penis next to a group of people, he, the mole would give it away. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's Jamie Gill's he's, penis. He's quite then, well, then there, would well be, endowed. there would be a uh, fucking John Holmes, and you'd be able to tell his cock's the length of like a fucking fire hose. I think the focus on my camera just broke. <laughs> it still looks better than on the pro. Well, Jesus Christ, your video right now looks better than on the prowl. Even though we're seeing your eyes and a lamp. That's the lamp. That's the I'm the only motherfucker with a picture of his house in his house. No, I didn't want you to say That's that. That's literally just a picture of my house. <laughs> you fucking doxed yourself now. No, but you that. can't see the address anyway, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. It just fucking pulled the if you're watching this part of the video, if you're if you're <laughs> watching this point in the video, you're you either care enough about me to find my address otherwise, yeah, or you don't give a shit about my address. Yeah, so you got the the Herschel, you know. uh, Herschel Here's Herschel's here's Herschel's statement of the day: Don't let a middle aged man shit on you in his apartment. Don't let a middle-aged man bring you into a limo with the reason to have sex with a porn star while you just while you're with your boys drinking Miller High Life. God, that is such an American moment. Man, imagine all the like spit from like all of them because they had their fucking. Oh, you know how much fucking titties. herpes was in that shit. Oh my! And like that bottle probably has more diseases than Jamie Dolce's wiener in that movie. The thing that I, I, that grossed me out was, like, the first douchebag starts off with a rubber, but he just finishes without it, which, c come on, man. If you're picking up random assholes from the street, just wear a rubber. This movie is, that, yeah, that movie's genuinely unsanitary as fuck. It's the Roach Motel version of a Jamie Gillis movie. Man, you can feel the, the limousine is also, the interior is brown. It's the closest that he ever got to, you know, being a seafood chef because there were a hell of a lot of crabs in that movie. Oh, the brown limo and just the fact that it's the same shot. Jamie the Gillis time. did like he liked brown. <laughs> yeah, he did on people especially. Uh, Liquid God. shit. Song. Don't watch the, the. You know, this is bad me saying this because I'm, you know, I'm selling a boot of it. And they've done art for the walking toilet bowl, but don't watch that movie. By the way, if you're curious about walking toilet bowl, it up banana box releasing. Yeah, no, and we're announcing it Friday, but all the all the profits go to the Riley Children's Hospital, so <laughs> Charity! Just like our mute release. We donated like three hundred dollars to the Trevor Project that day, so yay. Oh yeah, which release was that? Uh mute. That was our second oh, yeah. release ever. That was the first one I bought from you, and I did. Yeah, and I sent it to you in an Xbox case, and you did a video like, I don't know why the case is purple. I'm like, hey, it was a fucking Wii Sports, or not Wii Sports. An Xbox Kinect um, thing? That's, oh, that's why. Yeah. I never figured that out. You know what would have been funny? If the Blood Runner Zero tri uh, um, saga, you would have given the profits to, like, a, a needle sharing Oh god, that's <laughs> rough. <laughs> that's a rough statement. Just oh. might as well when we're talking about blood, might as well swap the blood. Speaking of that, we're doing um another official release soon. Oh for our boy. For our boy. Yeah. Our boy was on another oh, podcast shit. that's much bigger than ours. The Connor Dog, the Connor when the Connor is the Connor, Connor Dog who will be on He'll be on yeah. next month. He'll be on. I want Connor. I want to talk to Connor. It was so much fun. In Connor, Connor is better at podcasts than either of us, which is disappointing. 
Connor's been my friend since fucking day one of banana boxing and shot and shot. Yeah. So. I also shout out to the homie Connor, my um, my baby boy. I'll have to ask him if he wants to room with me at FrankenCon this year. Oh God! All three of us in a room together. Yeah, we can all. Kiss. So there would be more cum in that movie than oh, fucking Jamie Gillis' it's movie. Gonna, yeah, it's gonna smell worse than on the prowl. Also, um, speaking of Connor, I just want to shout out really quick uh, oh, the yeah. podcast he was on. Oh yeah, he was great. Um, um he was he was on an actual podcast, uh, the viral podcast episode one with um, I forgot her name, but she's Trailer Park Tammy, yeah. Chelsea Lynn. That's her name. Like an um, actual podcast, like not read to talk about to talk about his foot. To, yeah, to talk about his foot fetish. Which I didn't know about him, but I'll have to talk. Oh about well, him. no, that's the thing. But they, but the the thing is, is the podcast was actually really good and it was really funny. So I became a fan of that podcast with that because you know they brought Connor on. They were nice to him. Connor was a great guest. Oh my god, I love. Connor. They were they were good hosts. It was it was actually a very really like enlightening, wholesome, and funny podcast. And everybody in the comments were just thirsting after Connor. So. Connor's a hottie. Let's Connor let's all is, listen to ourselves. So Connor will be our most attractive. Guest. Actually, we're having another attractive guest on next week. Yeah, and Aaron too. We had on. Yeah, we yeah. God, we've had some hot. People I don't on. want to say that the others weren't attractive, but man, when you got Aaron, Connor, all of our friends are hot and yeah. cool. Well, Shout out, Aaron. Goddamn those abs. Yeah. Aaron makes Aaron is my workout inspiration yeah. in the way that I feel inspired when I watch his videos and then when I go to workout I don't do it. Aaron like posts like ab pics and I'm like, oh yeah, that's the stack. <laughs> that's the real stack, not that's the movies. The, no, not the movies. That's the real stack. You... But but next week we're having. Oh yeah. Oh shit. That's right. We're recording we're next having, week we're too. Having, we're having we're having Steven Grischuk on. Yeah. At least I don't have Another, to watch yeah. movies because I don't have the time. Sure. I want to watch his new movie before that. I was like the first person to buy it, so yeah. hopefully I get it too. I gotta buy that too. Oh, fucking Silly boy. boy. Are you doing your lawn at fucking this time? You fucking piece of shit neighbor. He is 826. Oh, oh my god, his goddamn Subaru with an exhaust the size of my fist. Jamie Gillis also knew a lot about fist. God, dude, it's just... Drive Both in a sexual and violent context. Oh yeah. Sorry, people. But like, funny people. enough, both bo both towards women. That was a joke. That was not a joke. But violence against women is fucking horrible. I should just say that right after that joke. I'm just distracted but. by the fucking fully grown adult man with a Subaru with an exhaust. This is, oh my god, dude, just drive. He's not even driving. He's showing it off to some fucking kids. That's a fucking Subaru. I know. Jesus Christ. I mean, I'm not saying I'm like rich or anything, but it's a fucking Subaru. <laughs> it's, just, it's a double. Like UI fuck. It's not a. It's, it's not a fucking Porsche. Yeah. Oh my god. I just want to see some guy driving his like fucking 2014 Ford Escape or something, like revving the engine. <laughs> just... He's drinking his fucking. He's 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 driving his fucking Leaf. Remember those the like first the electric cars? I forgot who made them, but they looked oh, like he's shit. He's like he's trying yeah. to charge it. This is silent. Oh my god. He's trying to grab his and he's like, it's like, hmm. Uh, yeah, just straight pipe your Nissan Leaf. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, got a fuck, he's got a fucking Pinto <laughs> outside revving the engine. The fucking exhaust just falls off. Dude, I saw the other day I was <sighs> driving. There was this guy in a, like, a lifted pickup truck and his exhaust was just fucking gr rolling on the ground. What a... Also, contra yeah, controversial statement. If you drive a lifted pickup truck, your cock is small. Oh, it's not controversial. That's just fact. If any of you listening drive a lifted pickup... It's just... Don't. don't. Nobody <laughs> thinks it's funny. Nobody, nobody thinks likes cool. it. We Nobody thinks your penis is big. Nobody, nobody thinks God, you're cool. It's actually the opposite. Your penis could be fucking massive. I'm not gonna think it is. <laughs> I'm not gonna be looking at that guy. And be like, man, I gotta go to fucking hog. I'm looking at that guy. I'm like, oh man, he's got a micro penis. Oh my god! Thank God he left. <laughs> fucking Christ! <laughs> I'm about to fucking yeah. go postal on my yeah. neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Stephen Grischuk. I can week. hear him. It's he's the he's four Fox blocks Street away. Films. Yeah, sorry. I fucking 
I hate people. What have, what have we been doing recently? I feel like we ran out of stuff to talk about, and I'm good for another ten minutes. So. Okay. Uh, cut. We, we can end whatever, but you know. We'll you we'll know. drag it out. We'll drag it out. <laughs> I was going to say projects. for more money, but this isn't getting money. <laughs> New projects and shoutouts. Uh, go check out my latest video. Uh, this is going to come out after. It's on Bloodsucking Freaks. I'm proud of it. It's it's funny, I think. That's, that's a good movie. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a movie for sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Vinegar Syndrome releasing it in 4K is fucking ballsy. I have to say, I pre-ordered immediately. <laughs> That was I so insane. Them, that and Mother's Day, I was not expecting. I pre-ordered both because I'm fucking cool. I'm gonna watch Mother's the, Day this weekend. Two fives. Mother's Day is my favorite trauma movie now. Yeah, I remember. It's so fun. It's so fun. It's so fucking good. I, it's better than Blood Sucking Freaks, but Blood Sucking Freaks is significantly dumber. Blood Sucking Freaks is just trash. It is. It is legitimately one of the fucking <laughs> trashiest and dumb movies ever made. But that's why I like it. So. The fucking the fucking dartboard on the woman's ass is hilarious to me. Yeah, and the cannibal and, they're, and the aged women. Yeah, and the drinking the guy's brain with a fucking straw and it sounds like he's sucking out a milkshake. Which it's that hilarious. that video got money and I described the scene where they decapitate a character that is supposed to be a child. Yeah, good times. That's a movie that's like supposed to be fucked up, but it's so fucking dumb that you have to laugh at it instead. It's absurdly stupid. Speaking of speaking of of disturbing though, for anybody that's listened to this far, that means you probably listen to my reviews. Watch when evil works, please. The movie's fucked up as hell. Jesus Christ! I was in the theater and I almost had a fucking panic attack. If you like seeing children get hurt, that will be your favorite movie. <laughs> okay, I mean that's that's sold. Is it on VOD? Yeah, we want to see a five-year-old get his brains eaten by his mother. Watch that movie. You ever want to see a five-year-old get attacked by a dog? Watch that movie. It's uh, if you like like seeing kids getting hurt. You want to see you want to see an autistic boy eat his grandmother. Just watch Urshel. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, my grandma's dead. Exactly. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. Fair enough. If you, want to get, jerky at this point. if you want to watch kids get massacred, it's either that movie or Troma's uh, Beware of Death. Or you can watch, or you can watch Columbine footage. You could. You want to do some montage of the uh, romanticize the Columbine killers? Go ahead. I won't be your friend, but go ahead. You do you. Boo. And you're probably a weird teenage girl. You're on the toilet right now. I'm taking a piss. I don't give a fuck. I'm pissing sitting down to make it quieter. So. Oh, I always piss sitting down. I'm not. No fucking man. Who, man I mean, who you are pre- No, men who pretend that pissing standing up is cool are the definition of toxic masculinity. I don't like pissing standing up because I'm tall and I always feel like I'm gonna look over and see someone's cock. Oh yeah, I I can't piss in public urinals if there's anybody else like around. I don't I don't like it. I don't like urine. I don't uh, fucking like it. I want to when I want to piss, I want my time. I don't. That What's angle the is... deal with public urination? <laughs> What's the deal with shitting on hookers named Carol? Bro, in the nineties, Jerry Seinfeld really was like, "What's the deal?" With statutory rape. And what's the deal with Who age of cons- consent? She's old enough to, she's young enough to be my daughter. <laughs> and she's not even legal, so she is actually more likely to be my daughter. <laughs> what's Jesus the deal? Christ. What's the deal with my neighbor dropping the end bomb? <laughs> <laughs> Kramer! Kramer! <laughs> Kramer. What you know how fucking unhinged it is this an episode of Silent Hill? Kramer does like the entrance where he just runs into his house and he just drops the N word. Yo, Kramer would have loved Jamie Gillis. <laughs> yeah, he probably knew him, fuck. Probably around the same. I just I also wanted to emphasize that I got that I totally ripped that off in the sick on Cinema Boys when they did the Nikatsu thing and Matt just goes, What's the deal with AIDS? <laughs> <laughs> I just I need to have a soundboard of Matt quotes out of context. Yeah. I just I like want when, like when Matt says when Matt said necrophilia was his second favorite form of philia. 
<laughs> Don't blast him on oh. that. Nobody knows about that. I was back when nobody and, was. And, and John and John's. Uh, this is quoting the second Cinema Boys. You can't cancel us. Uh, retard rape. <laughs> that was a quote of all time. <laughs> I mean, I can't say shit. I've probably. Said I don't even remember the movie. movie. I just remember that quote. Man, it was a movie called Retard Rape. Really fucked up. <laughs> Jamie Gillis would be like, yeah. It was on that the was bottom tier of the iceberg. <laughs> oh, God. Yo, Urschel should make the Jamie Gillis iceberg. <laughs> Jamie Gillis, I, the last one is just like, Jamie Gillis recorded himself pissing in 1993 and had it like stored on the camera and nobody's ever seen it. <laughs> It's the lost Jamie Gillis piss tape. But you play it all serious, like, all right, guys, this is this is gonna be hard to talk about. Walking toilet bowl. Jamie Gillis hired a prostitute named Carol to defecate on her chest. Yeah, no, he did though, and more than her chest. <laughs> no, you know that. Bro, he there's a part in that where he makes her rub shit on her fucking mouth like it's lipstick. And he says, yeah, you, he's like, yeah, you like that fucking lipstick? It's so fucking rough. Jesus Christ. Mm. That made me queasy. I couldn't do that because I have a nut allergy. <laughs> Jamie Gillis and his peanut poop. <laughs> you know who else has a nut allergy? The sick on cinema boys. Go listen to their podcast. But not <laughs> the old episodes. I don't know. John looks like the type of guy to have a peanut allergy. <laughs> John, John, John looks like he has a nut allergy. <laughs> Motherfucker looks like he could be killed by an almond. <laughs> this is because it's healthy. Yeah. <laughs> That's just the southern Yeah, that word. reminded me of that fucking joke. Didn't Matt make that joke of summer? Did you say that we were talking about our biggest nemesis? And he said to Matt's biggest nemesis is stairs. Yeah, I did say that. <laughs> that was fucked up. <laughs> oh god, I hope Matt's. We should just call Matt right now. We should just add Matt for do the do the the, the four minute call of Matt to see if he picks up. He's gonna be like, "What the fuck is happening here?" Not again. And then we can we can title it "Feed Sick on Cinema." <laughs> There's just <laughs> Matt is like, "What the fuck is going on here?" <laughs> All right. I don't think he's gonna pick up. Silly little boy <laughs> with not... his Night Dreams logo, <laughs> Night Dreams profile picture. I hope this uh, podcast does well because I just talked about a porn and it did well. So if it doesn't, you're gonna hear four knocks. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, Matt's not gonna answer. He's a little. Fun fact for anybody watching, I quote that from the sick on cinema podcast all the fucking time and my girlfriend hates it to the degree that she goes silent when i say that in the car oh my god when i did that voice... I'll, random, I'll randomly just go i'll randomly just go you gotta hear three knocks cocksucker and she just gets fucking dead quiet and stares at me dude i i made that voice at frankencon my voice was ruined completely because <laughs> i did <laughs> you're it not for, doing it right i was doing it for five hours you're gonna hear three knocks on your door the sad, the sad to Don next time we go. Hey Don, you Don, gonna hear? it's all motherfucker. You fucking. You about to make Cannibal Hawkins three? You, or are you gonna hear three knocks? If you do, two of them are on just a Flux's titty. <laughs> if if you do Shark Exorcist two, I'm a. You're gonna hear three knocks at your door. He I'm already a, did Shark Exorcist two, cocksucker. If he does a third one, I swear to God, I'm gonna end. He did Bigfoot Exorcist two. Fucking goddamn. Speaking of retards. <laughs> Speaking of retard, Sean C. Phillips. Sick on cinema. <laughs> Listen to their podcast. Yeah, speaking of retard, sick on cinema. Go check them out. I feel bad. You like Southerners? No? Well, you'll like that because the Southerners make tards of themselves. <laughs> that was a joke. Uh, we love the sick on cinema. Love. They're much better than us. We're... we're... Yeah. John made the joke about our podcast, and I laughed harder than I think I ever did. Like, oh, I was fucking passed out, because John said, John said the open casket was when your mom says we have sick on cinema at home. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, We're just bootlegs version of John and Matt. Yeah. yeah. 
Why are we all this bootlegs of God? No. God, you're gonna hear three knocks, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, when I'm John s- said that, when John said I'm gonna knock out your astral projected knees, that was the funniest fucking shit I've ever heard. Oh my god. Shout out to John. That may be the funniest joke you said on that show ever. I was fucking dying. Yes. I literally said that to people at work. I'm like, I was like, I'm gonna knock out those astral projection motherfuckers. You do be the funniest person in Tennessee, other than uh, than the government. <laughs> Connor's pretty funny. Connor's fucking. I love all of three. I I can't <laughs> wait to see them again. I'll fucking suckle on them titties. Yeah. Oh. Frank and Con here too, about to be fucking absurd. Yeah, I'm. Just, they never did batter our tits in, which I was kind of sad because. The closest that John ever came to coming is when he bought that street trash media book. Yeah. <laughs> he just stared at it for like five minutes. <laughs> he was just sitting in that chair looking at it like. <laughs> like a proud father. I mean, I don't blame him. He's like, this is the third copy of this I've ever bought. <laughs> He's like, yeah. It's good for you. Good for you, John. I mean, the boys to watch Stark Exorcist. Oh. That was a moment of all time. Then when we watched Sean uh, C. Donahue, uh, you know, he was, I actually don't know if his middle name is C. I don't know why I added that. Sean I was going to say Sean C. Phillips. <laughs> no, Sean Donahue. Uh, I finally watched Naked Cannibal Campers and I gave it a one out of five. Yeah. For anybody watching this, you know how fucking rare that is for me. Yeah. You're God damn, about the man who gave on the prowl of five. Yeah, so just imagine on my scale, cannibal or naked cannibal campers is a one. You know how fucking bad something has to be for me to give it a one. Man, that would probably translate Fuck. to a point five on the spooky scale. It actually goes negative, and you give it a five because it goes the other way. Oh my! It's God. so bad that it goes the other way on the scale and comes back around to a five. We're far ah, enough where Jesus. we can. We're far enough where we can shit on people. Murder size is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Fuck. It's a movie of all time. Jesus Christ, it's terrible. Dude, honestly, it makes Grandma look like a fucking masterpiece. That makes me upset that you even say that. Dude, at least I Grandma even was fun to watch in a group of drunk people and me crying. I don't know what the worst movie I've seen this year is. I mean, Grandma's That's probably there. Grandma. I think it's Grandma. I mean, but Strays, Strays is the worst movie I've seen in the theater. Oh. That's that makes um, sense. I saw the trailer and I knew that was gonna be a fucking disaster. Um, what else? Have murder I size, murder cycle, or sorry, homicycle. Thanks. Oh, I, 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 I fucking hated Taboo. <laughs> God damn, that's the most boring fucking porn ever. I think nothing takes um, the cake though. Alien Beasts has to be not only the worst movie I've seen this year, but probably of all time. Yeah, Shark Keepsake by uh, Nathan Hine. That was rough. The ra- rabid grannies, but only because of the fucking trauma like transfer of the movie. It's a great movie. Yeah, it's like it's like you take a great movie, you run it through like a, a fucking turd filter, and then take out thirty minutes of it. That's what that's what the trauma release literally is. What else did I hate this year? Oh my god, Cat Blood six six six. I mean, they did that to yourself, brother. <laughs> I know. Thanks, Killing. I mean, that's like, I mean, worse. you didn't go into that thinking that that was going to be good, I hope at least. No. no. But Thanks, Killing was um, worst. Thanks, Killing's pretty fucking bad. I won't lie. Oh, yeah. I gave a half star to Terrible Meal. <laughs> oh, Savage Sadist from Phil Prince was boring as fuck, but it <laughs> ends with a fart noise, so I gave it a two and a half. <laughs> But, I mean, that movie's fucking rough as hell. Um, yeah, grand, I, grandma and fucking... I watched, I watched Squirm Fest again a couple that, days ago. Was, how was that? I, I didn't enjoy it as much as <laughs> it was. It was a rough watch, but I did finish it. Uh, the Taming of Rebecca, that movie's fucking lame. I just see... I know a lot of people like that, so I mean, you know... I, you do you, but I thought it was boring. Some movies you like, you really like. I just see like a bunch of them that I have at a one star. <laughs> yeah, that's. Oh, I watched the president goes to heaven oh, from a uh, C. Tom. Shit, that God, was... that was fucking rough. Um, I watched Euphoria. The the entire show. Oh yeah. yeah, it was it was also boring as fuck. 
Um, yeah. Um, I watched uh, Sadistic Pleasures from Sam Hell. I know a lot of people like that one. I thought it was boring as fuck. Yeah. Notice that all my reviews for bad things are just because they're boring. Like yeah. for the most part, most of the, most of my ones and halves come from the fact that they're just fucking lame. I feel like I have I take the technical aspect a bit more into it. Like Grandma was just terrible. Oh and god, I, I made. literally one was literally so bad I tried to block it out. Was the fucking Savage Vengeance remake? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Block that movie. John was shitting on Savage Vengeance so much. I'm like, I'm gonna give this a five as a meme for the remake because you know you know it's gonna be worse anyway. And it was so bad I gave it a one half. Dude. And I gave the original Savage Vengeance like a 2.5 or a 3. Like, that's how you know that movie's dog shit. Oh my god. Dude, I discovered Bro, what a filmmaker the, what are the best that I hate. Seen this year, though? I just gotta plug this. It's gonna make so much people angry. I discovered a filmmaker that I despise this year, and it's Nico B. Who's Nico B? He directed Pig, which is like this proto- oh. Oh, oh wait, finished. wait, which? Oh wait, no, never mind. I was thinking of. Um, oh no, this one. The the uh, what's his name? Oh no, that um, like Adam Mason. Shot. No, yeah, no, no. Yeah, the, the Adam Mason movie. I also fucking hate with a pat. It's that is in my bottom five. That movie's so bad that it actually made me irritated. Can um. Everybody is saying. Everybody is saying it's like it's so cool because it's all done in one take. It doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, the movie's dog shit. Yeah. Boogie Don't lie to yourself. It, it, it's a fucking redneck yeah. going through his backyard and filming random shit and then acting like it's disturbing. Yeah, Boogie Nights and fucking Goodfellows also have, like, scenes that were done in one take, so... Those are better films. Go watch those instead yes. of fucking Pig. What are what are good movies we've seen this year, though? Um... I mean, I have a lot. A lot. But I discovered some of my within Miss Aggie. movies this year. Memories Within Miss was Aggie that? was lit. The movie is one of my favorites. Um, I discovered um, Begotten. Begotten, yeah. I watched Begotten this, for the first time this year, too. Um, of course. I also uh, gave that one five. The guy that made uh, Tetsuo, I watched a lot of his uh, filmography. and so, all Yeah, of them. I got the box set and I've been watching a lot of them. A Snake of June, uh, Tokyo mm-hmm. Fist. Bullet Ballet, I wasn't as into but i feel like it's just because i wasn't in the mood for what it was yeah it's a, it's a weirder one but i still gave it like a four so i feel like i have to say some b movies because that's what people expect but uh b movies that i saw this year that are bomb as fuck that you should watch are uh my lovely burnt brother and his squashed brain oh yeah incredible we will cover it on the podcast eventually because i fucking love that movie um, I've been wa- I watched a lot of Giuseppe Andrews this year. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I did too. <laughs> um, Erotomaniac, that was probably my favorite Baroque House movie this year. It's an animated movie. Oh yeah, yeah, I haven't seen that one. Yet. Um, I was from, kind of uh, off. Sam Salerno, who's also very funny. I follow him on Facebook, and he's very funny. Um, the movie is also funny. It's it's really roughly animated, but the comedy is definitely there. Um. Uh, another one of the worst movies I've seen this year is Trash Humpers, but that'll piss off a lot of people. <laughs> I'm if you're, um, uh, don't lie to yourself, people. Trash. We Humpers. watched Ale Maniacs this year. Oh yeah, we did. <laughs> that was a fucking experience. That was. Uh, I think I don't know what I hated more: watching that or on the Prowl. <laughs> oh, more good ones. Uh, Beyond the Infinite, two minutes. Oh, I um, seen it's that. an it's a Asian movie. I don't remember if it's Japanese or Korean. Um, it's like a time travel movie, but the time travel actually makes sense. Yeah, which it's really crazy. fucking good. Uh, you ruined from horrible reviews on his channel. Did a video about it, and it's really really fucking good. Um, Hayes from Shinya Tsukamoto, the director oh. of uh, Tetsuo. That's probably my favorite Tsukamoto movie. It's only like. 35 or 40 minutes yeah that's one i have and it's like it's one of the most disturbing movies i've ever seen like it literally made me almost have a panic attack (laughs) um yeah speaking of that i watched martyrs for the first time this year that was an experience i but that's odd to me that you hadn't seen it before because i watched it when i was like 17 or something i couldn't find a good copy now i got the umbrella releasing and i'm 
suicidal. Oh, another another one of my least favorites, uh, Blight of Humanity. Oh my god, you uh, watched that for real? Uh, for real? Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. Um, I didn't pay for it. <laughs> Thank God, I support. I'll say, I'll say, I'll say I got a free copy. Uh, I'll say I got a free copy. I'll say you go pirate go Mirandora's go movie. Yeah, don't don't even watch him yeah, at all. Don't let's be honest. That. No, don't give that man um, any attention. I liked uh, portraits of a Andrea Palmer a lot. I watched that this year for the first time. That was great. Uh, I watched Uratsuki Doji Legend of the Overfiend this year for the first time. We'll have to cover it on Hentai yeah. Two because that movie's bomb as fuck. Hentai Two. It's a movie. It's a movie that I forget that is a hentai. Like, is this a good sci-fi movie? Yeah, that's what I heard a lot about that one. It's just, it's just. Yeah, I mean that one's just kind of it's it's just kind of a classic. Like it it's kind of like borderline hentai in my opinion. Well, I mean it literally invented tentacle porn or like tentacle hentai, or like was what popularized it. But there's very little actually. I mean, it's yeah, La Blue Girl was like that too, where it was yeah. kind of La Blue Girl. I mean, La Blue Girl is more porn than that, but La Blue Girl's funny. But, um. I watched White Rose Campus, then everybody gets raped this year. Um, Sorry, I just got a message that pissed me off. No, oh God, you want to share? That's a wedding video customer oh. that I sent him the fucking video um, two months ago, asking him, hey, if you want mod modification, blah, 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 just let me know. And now he decided that, oh, could you let me know when uh, it'll be done? It's never confirmed me that the goddamn video was okay. Man, what the fuck? <sighs> we'll extend the podcast to nine. I gotta get off at nine, but because oh. I work tomorrow, I got ten minutes. It's fine. I'm, I'm just looking through my list of things that I watched this year now. Yeah. Uh, Beyond the Valley of Belief, uh, specifically part two from the Rock Bottom Video Guys, is genuinely one of the funniest movies I've ever seen. Yeah, I really need to hop on those because I really like. I oh, I watched a medieval vibrator for the first time this year, and that was that's a good also ending. really funny. Yeah, <laughs> I love like... Nathan Rumor. <laughs> Nathan was... Rumor is such a nice guy too. Like I've spoken to him a couple of times. He's super sweet, super uh, chill, nice guy. Funny thing about that is I showed that to a friend like the first time I watched it, and I didn't know what I was getting into. It was just funny to see this guy who basically only watches these types of movies whenever I bring them to him and it, let's just say that he got confused at what the fuck was going on yeah that's a good one <laughs> um as far as classics that i watched for the first time this year i watched the original the hills have eyes oh shit for real also bomb yeah you watched irizumi right yeah yeah irizumi is bomb yeah that's a great movie symptoms was a great recommendation from you yeah, Symptoms is awesome. That's that's one of my favorites I found this year, too. LA AIDS Jabber with the Spooky Five? Yeah, same. I gave that a five after you kept talking it up because I rewatched it. <laughs> I um, Dude, that was probably... One one from John from the Sigon Cinema Boys is Homesick from 2007. Oh, yeah. From um, the guy that made uh, You're Next. Yeah. Which I know people don't like around here, but I do. Yeah, but, um <laughs> People yeah, around um, here. Was, yeah, sick, I'm me. sick is great. Yeah, no, I mean you and the sick on cinema boys. Then I don't think either of them oh, came either really. Based. Uh, for me, Pappy's Graveyard. Oh yeah. Fucking weird one that nobody has ever heard of, but is like so Midwest coded that I kind of love it. Wasn't um, it put out by SRS? Yeah, it's like one of their actually few legitimately good movies. <laughs> um. I watched a lot of Dave West Cabbage movies this year and then spoke to Dave and he's a super nice guy. I have an hour interview that I've never posted. Dave missed This is for my book. And there are a lot of parts that I would have to edit because there's a lot of like personal discussion in that one. So I, um, I watched a Limbo. Limbo was good. Oh, yeah. The, Limbo uh, was good. Video movie. Yeah. Oh, uh, Red Spirit Lake for me. <laughs> I need to watch that one this week. I watched... Um, What's that? We, 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 yeah. we await. Yeah. I need to that watch one was weird as fuck. Yeah, real CBT. In it. Yeah. Uh, I watched uh, Jam, the British series this year. Oh, I don't know. Highly recommended. Really good. Um, my favorite part of Jam, though, is not the, like, admittedly hilarious fucking, like, 
part where the uh, parents try to get the man to sleep with their son um, when the dad was sleeping with him otherwise. Uh, but instead is the Mr. Lizard part, because it's so fucking stupid. When the people are just, they call in a TV repairman because their TV has lizards coming out of it, and they, they're, like, so confused. And it actually becomes, like, a horror movie, and it just makes it even funnier that it's kind of disturbing. And he's like, what's your name? He's like, Mr. Lizard. Um, yeah. Oh, I made you watch Long Weekend. Oh, yeah, Long Weekend is bomb as fuck, too. Oh, my God. that was That's one of my favorite movies that I found this year. That's a Herschel 5. Yeah, that's a spooky almost 5, which will probably go to a 5, because I haven't rewatched it since the... We should, we should cover days. that one. That's a really good movie. Yeah. We should do, like, an Oz PlayStation episode where we do that one. I'd be down, because I some of them are my favorite movies that... Um, uh, I like that one. I like uh, Wake and Fright a lot. Yeah, Wake and Fright I haven't seen yet. If you want something more like B movie esque, Turkey Shoot is one of my favorite. Osmo yeah, Turkey Shoot is dang. I love Turkey Shoot. <laughs> but I need to watch Wake and Fright. I as start- far as worst movies I've ever seen, that I gave a five mainly because of the meme, but also because they're so fucking stupid that I cry laugh at them as a talking cat from David Dakota. <laughs> oh, yeah, that you're fucking. I followed that up by Dr. Alien. I fucking hated Dr. Alien, though. Dude. God damn. Oh, oh, oh Bad Boy Lover Boy, I watched oh, this year. Oh, that's a great one. I watched that like last year. That's an amazing indie one. Oh my god, I love that. That's another Herschel 5 that I didn't expect it to be. That is so um, good. I watched Evil Night, the shot on video movie from 1992. Bomb movie. Like, weirdly ambitious, too. Well, I'll add it to my watch list. What the fuck? Yeah, it's great. Um, one of my favorite shot on video movies in general. One of my favorite horror movies in general, for fuck's sake. Um, the Paradise Motel. Oh, yeah, you're fucking... With the most fucking alien movie ever made that Ellie was like, I'm taking Herschel's word on this, and then she watched it twice in a row. <laughs> Didn't she, like, not um, like it? <laughs> I think she gave it, like, a four. Oh, okay. So, I thought I got yeah. confused with uh, The Holdra, another one that I oh, learned about from your room, which is, which is generally, I think it may be the most bizarre movie I've ever seen. <laughs> Shattered In, another great show and video movie. Uh, sick on Cinema Boys recommendation. Yeah. Uh, Freeway. Oh, another one we'll have to yeah, cut on the podcast yeah, because yeah. it was really good. It's like a sleazy exploitation retelling of uh, um, Little Red Riding Hood. I saw uh, oh voice crack. I saw Steven's films for the first time, which I recommend all of them. Yeah. Also. Also. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Steven's movies. Sound of Summer. Uh, the Female Vampire from Just Franco. Oh, Franco. yeah. For me, my favorite Just Franco movie. I, I couldn't tell you. I watched so many good Just Franco movies that lately I can't tell you. A Virgin Among the Living Dead was probably up there. But I can't, like... Man, I don't... Yeah, my, mine's definitely The Female Vampire. Number two is either Vampiros, Lesbos, or uh, oh, yeah. Neurotic Rites of Frankenstein. Yeah, I think I, I like most of those female a female vampire probably rated the highest. I mean, it's still good. It is, but you know, uh, Unicorn Wars for me uh, oh, is another. I still need to watch that. The, probably the darkest animated movie I've ever seen. Yeah, I did buy it on streaming, so that's good. Here's an embarrassing one for me. I watched RoboCop, the original one, for the first time this year. <laughs> Yeah, that movie. Um, so along with Possession, Possession. Fuck, I watched a lot of classics oh, for the I first time this year. Watched, I haven't watched Possession yet. Possession's a fucking fuck. Yeah, I know. Uh, the New York Ripper. Ooh. Another one I watched for the first time this year. I need to watch that during my October uh, watching. Uh, cruising for me. Another William Friedkin. Oh. Probably my favorite William Friedkin movie, which is really controversial to say. I don't think um, so. I've heard a lot of people love that one. I haven't seen it yet. I need to. I watched I watched pretty much the entire Bad Bin series this year. Oh, I haven't you. seen part 12 yet, but for me, that was a big one. Dude, after Frankencon, you slap those in one after the other every time. I did. I literally watched them 11 in a row. <laughs> You were uh, obsessed with. I remember just every notification from Discord was just you talking about Bad Ben. Yeah, you fucking. Uh, more recent ones for me, Love and Saucers from 2017. 
Uh, it's a documentary about a guy who thinks he is uh, abducted by aliens who like painted his experiences over like a decades period. Really good. Um, a Corpse for Christmas, really good oh, yeah. from uh, yeah. the uh, Blood Six Psychosis people and Bruce Longo. Really good movie. All right, now we're just uh, rambling on, so I think it's better to. I gotta get one more. Yeah, gotta go. Gotta I watched go. Femmes Decide. Oh, Wait, that's the last one. <laughs> Femmes Femmes Decide. Decide. <laughs> oh, and Mascara. Mascara. Go watch that. I watched that recently. It's one of the best pornos I've ever seen. Yeah. So, all right, per perfect. Thank you, people. This was the probably longest episode that is in the Ellie one because Urshel got got. Faded. I got distracted. You got faded. I'm not even, I, I actually, I think I'm actually pretty sober right now. Yeah. I sober up pretty quick. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Next week we're gonna be back because Steven. Yeah, with Steven, and yeah, we took. Hopefully, a... I watch his new movie before then. Hopefully, Steven. I think he's shipping them soon. So hope. I mean, I think last time his movie came in like two or three days. So yeah. Steven. Hopefully, I'll have Steven. Oh, next time. Last time I ordered from him. Took, Sexy uh, man took fucking two months but that's just canadian shipping it only took a one very month. a very sexy a very sexy man beautiful man a very good man. a very good man a friend of mine a friend of the show i'm sure he has the quite the list. hog on him too steven and movie four please show hog yeah show hog. you you set yourself on fire next step is showing hog and the next one should be called the black cock collectors <laughs> <laughs> All right, people, and on that note, see y'all later. We'll, we'll see you later, everybody. Good night. And to Linda, wherever you are. Yeah. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Linda. <laughs> and Carol, too. She was probably dead.